Hi, my name is Amber Stevenson. I am the owner and founder of Rosebud's Ranch and Garden, also Rosebud's Real Food. Rosebud's Real Food is our store we've had here at Second Street Market um, for the last two years. Um, and then also we have just opened a location in Piqua, Ohio, which is our home store. Um, so we are so excited to um, be with you today. We are going to show you how to make our pot of Maria's chili. Maria's chili is one of our seasoning mixes and it is such an easy um, chili. Wonderful for a rainy day. We are in the um, dreary months of the year and everything is gloomy and it is just so warm and cozy. We thought you guys would enjoy it too. So we're gonna get started. Um, we are using a lot of local products. Um, we are using ground pork from um, Carroll Creek Farms. Carroll Creek Farms is one of our um, vendors here at Second Street Market. They are also the neighbor um, to us at Rosebud's Real Food. We're also using some grass-fed beef, and we've got that in the pot already started here. We are going to add our ground pork. So we've got two pounds of meat in here right now. And then we're gonna stir this around a moment. Make sure our heat's up. And we are going to add the Maria's chili seasoning at this time. So what my recommendation is when you're making a pot of chili, you wanna start with one um, tablespoon of, of the Maria's chili mix to one pound of meat that you're using. So in this pot of chili, we're actually going to use about two tablespoons of Maria's chili. If you wanna start off with one to make sure it's not too warm for you, um, that would, might be a good idea. We like it a little, with a little bit of heat. So we've got one tablespoon there. Second tablespoon. So we've got a pound of grass-fed beef and a pound of pastured pork in here. Both are from Carroll Creek Farms. We are also going to add about a cup of diced red onion. And we are going to let this simmer a while. So some of the other things that we love to use are, um, we have our red onions from some of our local vendors. Um, I have fresh homemade salsa that we're going to be adding to our pot of chili. Um, we like to use organic black beans. A lot of people like red beans in their chili. I personally use black beans. And then the other item that we're going to add is canned pumpkin. Now, it is pumpkin season. Cooking a pumpkin in the oven is a very simple task. Pumpkins are very plentiful. Um, all you need to do is basically pop it in the oven um, for about an hour at um, 450 and your pumpkin will be ready to go. Scrape out your seeds and you can use that instead of the can of pumpkin. Today, for easiness sake, we're gonna use a can of pumpkin. We are also going to use local sweet corn. I am kind of a sweet corn snob. I like my sweet corn local. I don't like it from the grocery store. Um, and we actually um, preserved about, oh, 120 years, I believe it was this year. So we um, cut the corn off the cob and we put it in our little, own little vacuum sealed freezer bags. That was our personal thing. Um, you can get sweet corn in the freezer section at the grocery store right now, and that will work just as well. The next ingredient that we're gonna to add to our already browned, um, we've got our one pound of beef and one pound of pork in here, and also our red onion. We are going to add um, some bone broth. 
I do a lot of making bone broth. Bone broth is very important for the body. Um, we seem to have more problems with our joints and um, more aches and pains than probably our ancestors did. And that's because we're eating chicken breast rather than cooking the whole chicken and getting all that goodness from the bones of the chicken. So I actually take those leftover bones and we put them in a stock pot. We add a little bit of apple cider vinegar and we make what's called bone broth or chicken stock. There are some technical differences with that, um, but we won't go into those today. But for this recipe, we're going to add some bone broth because I want to get it into my body and into my family any way I can. So we've got the bone broth in there for some added moisture. We are going to add, um, my recipe states, um, a can of fire roasted um, tomatoes and a can of salsa. It just happens to be tomato season and I just made fresh salsa. So this is about the equivalent of that two cans. This is my homemade salsa. I'm gonna go ahead and add that whole thing to the pot. So because it's salsa, it's already got some onions in it. It's got some peppers. Um, it's got some spices, so it's going to add a really nice flavor as well as having the Maria's chili mix in there. Um, the next thing that we're going to add is um, black beans. I like organic black beans. I do buy a lot of dried black beans. Also, another way to get the bone broth into the kiddos, um, when you're cooking your black beans, I do them in an instant pot often. Um, I'll take the dried back be black beans and then I'll add bone broth as the water to reconstitute the dried beans. That's one more way of getting that bone broth into your body. So we've got the black beans here. They're going in to the pot. And then I mentioned sweet corn earlier. So my family doesn't like cinnamon. We are not a Cincinnati chili family. We don't like the cinnamon in our chili. However, we do like a little bit of sweetness and we like our chili to be nice and thick. So to add a little bit of sweetness and just that little bit of fiesta, we do the, um, this is our local sweet corn that we've put up. So we're gonna add that. Usually I do about half that much for the size of a batch of chili. I'm feeling extra corny, haha, so we're going to go ahead and put it all in there. So it kind of eats like a salsa as well. And then the last ingredient that we like to add is canned pumpkin. So because we're wanting the goodness of that broth, um, we want that little bit of sweetness, but without the cinnamon, um, we're going to add pumpkin. Pumpkin also has a lot of nutrients to it. So we're gonna do some canned pumpkin, or you can do a cooked pumpkin. Now our Maria's chili mix is called Maria's chili because Maria is my stepdaughter. And when I made this chili for the first time, I um, made a huge pot and she actually ate the chili breakfast, lunch, and dinner two days in a row. So I figured out I had something with the seasoning mix that I had come up with and we called it Maria's Chili. So we're going to get this all stirred up and it looks absolutely fantastic. It actually looks kind of like a corn and black bean salsa. And then we're going to let that simmer on the stove for about an hour. So our chili is now ready to be dished up. It is bubbling wonderfully. It's been simmering for about an hour or more. Um, the longer it goes, the more flavors it builds. And you can see how nice and thick it is. We've got the beans, the corn, the tomatoes, and you can't even tell that the pumpkin is in there. It just adds a nice sweetness and a nice thickness to it. My favorite way is maybe a little guacamole, which I didn't get to bring today, um, especially when we use uh, Rosebud's guaca salsa in that. But I love to add a little bit of shredded cheese. We've got some raw milk Colby today. Cheddar would be awesome. And then a little bit of sour cream. And then you're ready to dive in. Thank you guys all for joining us today. I've had a great time sharing my chili recipe with you and I hope you'll come see us soon.